When using a modern reefing or furling unit, it's necessary to protect the furled sail edge from UV exposure. Without a cover, the furled sail will rot in the sun in short order. There are a few choices for protecting the sail from the UV. You can put on a sacrificial cover on the leech in the foot, or you can do as this video shows, build a sleeve that would be pulled up over the furled sail to protect it from the elements. In this video, we're going to build a sleeve furling cover kit, and we're also going to show you how to install long zippers to ensure that they come out even. Your kit will come with one long length of fabric. You'll be cutting that long length of fabric into two long strips. To determine the width of those strips, take the circumference of the sail at its largest point and add six inches. We'll be joining these two long strips together. Then we'll determine the length after the double hem is done. So you'll do the length at a later step. The length will be determined by the luff and you'll add 5 inches for double hems and seams and you'll also add 0.75 inches for every 10 foot of luff for any needle pucker. Let's turn our attention to the two long strips that we cut. That's basically what we see in A. We cut those into two long strips equal to the width that we desire and then in C what you do is lay those two long strips on top of each other with the finished sides facing each other. We'll do a semi-flat filled seam to join them. Here you see Deb using a hot knife to cut out these long strips, but you can also use scissors. A hot knife helps prevent unraveling. Now she lays the panels on top of each other with the finished side facing each other, and now she'll create that semi-flat filled seam. Here's the top width. You want it the first stitch about a half inch away from that raw edge. These are with the panels laying on top of each other. Then lift one layer of cloth from the other and spread them out and then sew a top stitch about a quarter inch away from that fold. This is a semi-flat felled seam. So here we are sewing a half inch away from the raw edge with those two panels laying directly on top of each other and now here we are sewing the top stitch. And here's what the underside should look like. We'll now place a double hem on one of the short edges. We'll mark it with a ruler at two inches, apply double sided tape to help hold things in place while we sew, and then create the double hem here. This double hem will result in a one inch hem. We'll now take it over to the sewing machine and we'll sew a straight stitch to secure this double hem in place. Again, we've only done this to one of the short edges. The other edge will need to be measured first, then we'll create a double hem there as well. At the start of this video, we talked about measuring for the length. We'll take the luff length plus two inches for the second hem that we're going to add into this, and we'll add 0.75 inches for every 10 foot of luff length for any kind of needle pucker, which usually ends up in reducing the length of the panel. So after you have that calculation, measure from your first double hem that you created, and now we're going to make a second double hem on the far opposite edge. So here we are measuring, and now here we are sewing that double hem on the opposite edge. We'll now place double sided tape on both sides of this zipper, keeping the tape away from the teeth as far as possible. In a sleeve like this, it's necessary to have two zippers so that the sheets can come out near the bottom of your sock. In lieu of using double sided tape on the zippers, some people prefer to staple or pin the zipper in place. The idea here is to make sure that you apply both sides of the zipper on nice and even, that you do not stretch or shrink one side as you place it on the long length of fabric. If you find that this is a difficult task, it's a good idea to mark it every three foot or so. As you can see in this illustration, we've marked it here on both sides of the zipper and also on the opposite side of the fabric. This is the top of the sleeve and this is where the zipper starter should be placed. Here on the second zipper, this is where it should be placed. And you can either mark this side as you go or wait till you're completely done. And what I do is hold this in half, starting it even. And then I'm going to bring this over. I'm going to mark your zipper here and straight across on this side. And then you want to mark your fabric also. So Deb's marked both sides of the zipper on the flange, and she's marked the opposite side of fabric. 
In doing this, you're assured that you will not stretch or shrink the zipper as you install it to the sides of this long length of fabric. If you're confident that you won't stretch or shrink this, it's not necessary. But if you're a little bit leery, we suggest you do this. Straight across and mark your zipper. You want to start back here where your first mark is and just walk it down. Next mark, and then you want to bring this over and mark this side. So when you put the other side of the zipper to this side, you can line that mark up. All right, let's move on. Here she is installing the second zipper, only a few inches away from that first Give long zipper. A bit of space after your mark. If you prefer to have the sheets exit out here, leave about six inches mm -hmm. between these two zippers. Otherwise, the sheets will come out the bottom. Okay, at this point, we're coming out. The, the length that we want to we'll just flip this back and we'll bring it right to the end like so okay if you have to if your zipper ends up longer here and you need to cut it off all you need to do is take a piece of your fabric hot knife cut it so that it doesn't fray and then you can just take that and fold around the end of the zipper and when you sew your zipper down just Sew this down tight also. And then when your zipper slide comes down, that fabric that's sewn down here will keep it from going off the end. All right, one side of the zipper has been basted to this long length of panel. Now we do a reverse stitch here to lock this zipper in place, and then we sew down its entire length along that flange. When you come to the slider in this zipper, you'll notice that Deb buries the needle into the fabric, lifts her foot, and then moves that slider out of the way so that she can continue sewing. There, she just did it. Now we're coming to the end of the zipper. She'll create a little fold here in the end. it back away from the teeth. And she wants to keep it away from the teeth, and then she'll sew right over that and then continue sewing to secure the second zipper in place. In this sock, we have that second zipper only an inch away from the top zipper. You can add a few inches here for the exit of sheets if you like, three to six inches. As she starts to sew down that second zipper, she's also doing some bar tacking to lock that zipper in place. And you can see here, she's buried the needle, lifted the foot, and pushed the slider up. When that's done, we'll remove the opposite side of zipper and install it to the other side of this long length of fabric. There's double-sided tape on it, so just peel back the uh, paper revealing the glue and start basting according to the marks that you put on the fabric. We've now started at the bottom of the sleeve and are moving up towards the top, or the closest position to the mass top. We're installing the second length of zipper and matching up the marks. There's the mark on the one side and here's the mark on this side. As long as you don't stretch or pull the zipper, you should not have any problem matching up each one of these marks. This one's been marked with a pencil to help you see it, but you can see it's coming out beautiful because Deb is not stretching or shrinking as she installs it to the opposite side. Right side down. We did not show the second stitch where we sewed the other side of the zipper down, but here's what you do next. You want to fold this over and you want to fold it so that your teeth are lined up with the edge of your fold. That way when it's zipped up, it's protected from the sun on the teeth. So this will be the top stitch of the zipper, which will create a beautiful back. fold. Now, if you would like, you can base this down again also to hold it in place. As is customary with all sewing, start and end your stitches with a reverse to lock your stitch in place. Or you can fold it as you go. Just make sure that your edge is right at the edge of your teeth. This zipper has already been sewn down in place. We're just creating that fold. So this is the stitch you'll see on the outside. That first stitch you'll never see because it's on the inside. And you can see she's keeping the teeth right along that folded a edge. A couple back tacks on all the ends. Make sure that you secure the fold. Moving on, we've now sewn both sides of the zipper. And here's what it looks like. Once they go together, it'll bring both of these together. Looks great. Here's the bottom side of this sleeve. 
Jeff zipping it together. The sheets on this sleeve will come out the bottom. If you want them to come out right at these two zipper points, make sure you leave about six inches between the zippers. Now we're going to cut webbing with a hot knife, that's what you saw there briefly, and we can install it on the sleeve as shown here, or we can install it with them underneath the sleeve so that they're mostly hidden. And just create a box X stitch there, we're not going to show the whole process. By installing a loop on both sides of the zipper, this ensures that when the halyard is attached to both of these loops, the bag does not come undone. It's important to install the Serite logo to help you identify the bottom of the sleeve and the top of the sleeve. We'll install this logo near the bottom. Unzip the sleeve and then sew this logo in place to help secure it. Sew around the perimeter. Here's what the sleeve looks like almost done. We just have one more task to do and that is to install webbing as we did previously at the top at the bottom here. And again we do it with a box X stitch and here's what it looks like. By installing two loops next to each other, you prevent accidental opening. Your sleeve is now complete, and you should have also had some helpful hints on how to install long zippers. I'm Eric Grant with Say All Right. Thanks for watching.